sense. And 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 uh, one other question I wanted to ask is like because you have been on both the sides of research now, being a student versus now a successful uh, researcher at Google. So, in terms of your, uh, if you were to reflect back, uh, and I think you would have struggled with defining your thesis as in like what do you want to work on, what really interests you versus what you can actually do so that you can thrive uh, into the research world. If you look back and if you were to advise someone, what do you really count for a good thesis as in like, how would you advise someone that you can say that, hey, at least if you have this many check marks, then that actually counts for a good thesis. And we are not being a very optimistic that, hey, just work on something that interests you. That's a very vague definition. But would yeah. you have any three or three or four uh, things that you would advise a PhD student to consider so that he or she can have a good thesis direction? Yeah, I think one of the favorite things that I have, and I'm quoting my friend Thirsty Liang, is that if you see everyone is running, uh, following it, well, maybe that's not a good idea. <laughs> I really like the way he puts it. Um, yeah, I think I I, I want to say that there's so many low-hanging fruits, but who cares if you write like 40 papers of low-hanging fruits? If you really, if you really want to um, see if you've done a really good work, is did you take a step back and look at what people are doing and maybe propose a new angle or propose a new idea or even question, hey, this is this, everyone is saying this, but maybe this is wrong. So do, those are my favorite thesis. And I think in order to do that, it would be really good to have community of um, people who are more senior than you. And like, you don't need to meet with them every week, but like get feedback from people and also be keep an open mind not think about okay this person is the best person so i'm just going to fo follow what they're saying just keep an open mind look at what other people are saying of course your interest makes the space smaller but in there it's like what are the type of questions that people are not asking what is the direction that i can come in where where does my strengths help me and also I'll always look out for opportunities to learn new things and I think one thing, one advice that I have, which I can't emphasize it enough, is that have mentors. Go talk to people who say, okay, this is my research agenda. This is what I'm thinking about. What is your, what is your feedback? Even if it's just a 30 minute chat, that would definitely be helpful. And, um, and don't shy away from asking people questions. I think a lot of PhD students, and myself included for a while, is like, you're like, okay, this person is so senior. How do I approach them? Just approach them. What's, what's the worst thing that's going to happen? So definitely ask for feedback and also keep an open mind and also don't look for low hanging fruits. Um, and another thing that I want to mention is that definitely be, work on having this capability that if you have an idea, you could verify it, even if it's for something is small, even the model that you're looking at is a small. Um, just get in there, try out ideas, think about things. If it's you're improving, try to do things yourself. Just as you were mentioning, there's so many papers coming up. If you just read too many papers, then you're paralyzed. You're like, okay, they're, because you can't follow everything. So there, you need to really have some time scheduled for, okay, let's take a step back. Let's think about problem myself. What does my voice say? What, how do I think about this? Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can completely relate to this. And uh, yeah, I I, I, uh, I can understand the depth behind these advices. So yeah, this is very useful. And this is something I have realized for my uh, my projects also. And this was uh, along the lines of discussing with my other friends, other people that I normally talk to. And that is a major misconception that most of the people when they get into the PhD program is they, they're trying to invent something, but it doesn't have to be always like, you know, like reinventing the whole wheel, thinking out of the box, but it's like exactly. understanding it's it's more of uh, it's more of understanding the research problem and the techniques. And one thing that I I, I think I I wrote it down few 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 time back is like uh, make, like compiling a model and running the model is the least thing you need to do as a CS research student because that's that's what my basic understanding was that majority of the time I would be just writing code, programming, and writing deep learning models. But I think that's something that what happens before training the model and after training the model that really accounts for the. Uh, research and i think that's that's where the learning happens as a as a phd student so yeah yeah it, it's it's something that we, what you said about persistence i think that relates best into these two buckets so yeah this this makes a lot of sense and yeah uh, just, and i think one last yeah sorry and one last so, thing i wanted to mention is talking about persistence and resilience that's really important 
and PhD time, graduate school time is something, there's a time that there's a lot of stresses, there's a lot of unknowns. So really know that you're not alone if you're struggling with it and also get help in that sense as well. Mental health is really important and we don't talk about it enough, but that's something that we really need to take care of ourselves um, and definitely get help with that. However kind of help makes sense for uh, someone. So I think that's another thing that I want. Yeah, no, definitely. That's a very important point. I really love that.